Hey guys, James Prane with EFI. Um, just bringing you another quick little video on um, uh, something I get asked a lot. And uh, I've incorporated this in some trainings that I've done in the field, but I always think it's a good idea to have a reference of this, uh, even in the training material in a video format. So, you know, the question comes up um, how do you deactivate um, a client license? Um, so, impose, compose, job master. Well, to answer how you deactivate, I think we got to answer how you activate it first. So, um, in my fire review right here, I have a bunch of jobs in my queue. So, if I was activating a license, um, I could do it a multitude of ways. I'm going to show you the way that is prescribed in the training. And that is if you just click on a job right here and you go to preview, once it brings up the preview of this job, if you go to help, I'm on my cloud here and say manage license. Uh, that'll bring up the screen which will show you what's available to be licensed and um, right here what's available and what is already licensed. Uh, something worth noting is anything that's licensed, the, the license code is right here. So if you have those customers who's lost lost that sheet of paper, um, this is where you could, you know, get the license code, write it down, put it someplace safe, and now they have it. Uh, but if I click activate, you know, that's where it's going to bring up the, the screen that's going to say, you know, you want to activate this now, put your license code in, click continue, and then it goes on to, to uh, activate. Uh, I'm going to cancel because we're going to go back to that, that screen and show you that if you were working on, and let's say this is the Fiery controller itself, and uh, you're going to replace a hard drive. Um, when replacing a hard drive, you don't have to deactivate the license codes. But if you think about it, it's a smart thing to do. I mean, the license is stored on our server. And we associate those licenses with the MAC address of the computer. So as long as you're not swapping out the motherboard or replacing the whole computer where the MAC address is uh, stored, then uh, you don't have to deactivate. But it is a good idea to deactivate anytime you do any of that type of work and then put the license code back in and this is where you could deactivate it however there's one other feature in here let's say you didn't deactivate this and you didn't change your motherboard so you didn't change the MAC address but you changed some of something else or you reloaded system software and for some reason the license did not come back if you click on this little gear right here it'll give you an option you want to restore yes if you click restore it will send um, the MAC address associated with this license key up to our server. We'll compare it. If they match, it gives the license key back and the feature is restored. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Keep that in mind. Um, that is a, you know, a real good practice for you to have to deactivate licenses before you do any work on it and then reactivate them. Uh, but if you forget to do that, just don't forget about this gear. It can be really helpful for you. All right. Great, guys. Talk to you. Bye.